let's turn to the housing market. Our next guest says there's a very little risk of a housing downturn in the next five years, with home prices only declining by about 2 to 3 percent in that period. And that is not good news for younger generations that are trying to buy. The average home buyer age, we've seen, risen from 31 to 36 since 1990. Joining us now with that call is Meredith Whitney. Meredith Whitney, advisory group founder and CEO. She is relaunching her advisory firm after being one of the first analysts to predict the great financial crisis. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So why are you getting back into the business first? Just a personal question first. A personal question is why I left the business is because it was just not interesting to me anymore. There was so much government involvement, be it from regulation, be it from QE, which is the way banks made earnings for the longest time and recapitalized their very weak balance sheets, um, be, you know, untethered fiscal spending. It just like I didn't want to be the analyst that reported on quarterly earnings and a maintenance analyst. And um, I was like, it was like watching paint dry. And things started to change about 18 months ago. I don't think I missed anything in 10 years. And that's a big statement because there have been trading action with the banks, but not a lot of big moves. And I love to dig my teeth into big secular themes. And I think you're starting to see them now. And so now it's really fun and I can't stop writing. And this is exactly what I should be doing when I'm this excited. And it's going beyond the banks. For instance, you've looked at housing for your first report. I always take a wide uh, berth because my single biggest interest is the consumer. So the, fa the foundation of the consumer is housing, right? So that's the largest asset for most consumers. And what you see in housing and what has changed is when I left, I thought that housing prices would overshoot on the downside, which they did right around 2000. 12. Um, and now they've um, risen. But what's really interesting is um, uh, 2012, you saw a nadir in equity in homes. Today, you see the highest equity in homes since 1990 and before. So in a, in a different way to look at it, the LTV, average LTV on a home in the U.S. is 30 percent. You haven't seen that in Oh, well over 30 years. And so why I say there's no risk for an immediate downturn is because there's no forced selling. Forced selling is going to cause the big gap between big ask. And I think what you're going to see is um, when you start to see a turn, you start to see homeowners tap into their home equity. You have not seen that at all. So people are sitting on of like big piggy banks, and um, uh, and they are not sweating it. So, and that's older generation. So yeah. important to differentiate. Um, I think you have to divide the millennial generation into two parts. So those over, let's say, 40 and those under 40, uh, maybe 38 being the cutting point, just because I'm a, a stickler. Um, <laughs> and you see the, uh, a disproportionate amount of 38 and older being homeowners, those who have benefited f from over $20 trillion in equity created in their homes in the last 10 years. I mean, that's a staggering amount. Um, and then those who don't own homes. So homes, homes have been for savings. Like, um, it's been the best saving vehicle. It hasn't been a wealth creator historically. It has been in the last 10 years, but historically hasn't been. So they can't enter into the housing market. They don't have savings, and they probably can't afford mortgage payments. And so what, they, what happens then is they're shut out of the mortgage market. But importantly, you see the lowest household formation in 150 years. So people are getting waiting longer to get married. You, you mentioned the average home buyer went from 32 to 30. You know, 36, um, 38, like it's getting older and yeah. older. So what that means then, pay attention to, to let's say, four years out when um, boomers and millennials, particularly boomers, want to downsize, there's going to be a lower demand and a higher supply. Today, there's a greater demand and a lower yeah. supply. That's going to invert. And I think that's when you see a bigger bid-ask spread because the, the Gen Zers and the lower millennials are not going to be in a position short of a major, major change in regulation to well, allow them to do that. Wouldn't a dramatic increase in unemployment force people to list if they had to change jobs in a different city, get more mobile? Or is that, you don't, even that, what do you think would keep listings suppressed? I think... Um, uh, they could rent. They, they, there's not, again, there's, like, there's, a, there's not much in terms of the rental inventory either. Um, there are other options. And, of course, they, again, could tap into their home equity. That if I keep looking at, like a... Like a waiting like a for hawk, the offers to come in? No, waiting for 
home equity to be tapped, and you just don't see that. So the numbers come out Thursday, um, and obviously we'll be watching it, but that's a big deal. So I think the other factor here is uh, uh, employment. And 40% of employee, uh, employees are working remote or hybrid. And um, it's anecdotal because, as we, like, the W-9s can't support, I can't get the, the information from the Treasury, but there's enough anecdotal information to support that many of that 40% are working multiple jobs. So I wrote a report uh, titled Millennials Are Still Eating uh, Avocado toast and drinking French press coffee, like they're still spending. And I, yeah. if I look, and again, I always try to figure out where I'm wrong. If I look at spending, um, everyone's worried about retail spending being down. Well, you don't have new home buyers, so there's no reason to buy new furniture. And people bought enough patio furniture, and there might be just buyer uh, buyer delays. But people are still spending on travel and leisure, and so I, I'm not worried about. Um, a big downturn in the economy and, and housing.